Welcome to the Empowered to Connect podcast, where we come together to discuss a healing-centered approach to engagement and well-being for ourselves, our families, and our communities. I'm J.D. Wilson, and I am your host. And today on the show, we walk through one of our uh, favorite projects we worked on in quite a while, and that is um, our Connecting Practices Handbook. Um, as most of you know, we did a massive rewrite of our parenting curriculum, which we call Cultivate Connection. Um, that launched last year, and so we are. Um, it had been throughout the course of this year, working on a bunch of new resources. And um, one of those things was the Connecting Practices Handbook. So Becca McKay and Tana Ottinger are going to join me. And we're going to talk about that handbook, but also what are the connecting practices as we head into a summer of talking about them. Um, I don't know about you, for me personally, um, as we head into summer, there's a bit of like a pep talk I've got to give myself um, parenting wise, because um, I love my kids and I love them being home with not as much structure the whole summer. So uh, we are going to um, just remind everybody, all of us together all summer, why we're doing what we're doing and um, give some practical tools and tips and strategies for how to do those things. And so today we'll talk about the connecting practices and the handbook um, and get into all of that, as well as give an overview of how we're going to walk through the summer. Um, Tana and Becca are going to join me here in just a minute. And so without any further ado, here they are. And let's jump into the conversation now. Well, okay, we are here uh, today with Tana and Becca. And um, as we talked about in the opening, we're going to be talking through um, all this summer, our connecting practices from our parenting curriculum, which is Cultivate Connection. Um, and so, well, one thing we wanted to introduce today, we have a new um, resource that goes with that. Um, it's, I mean, look, to go through Cultivate Connection um, is a significant commitment. As, as most of you know, who have been through it before, like it is about 400 pages of content. It goes uh, anywhere from, you know, nine to 18 weeks based on how you split up uh, the teaching. And so, um, <coughs> So today what we wanted to do was go through um, a new resource we have as either an intro or a reminder resource. And it's called um, our Connecting Practice Handbook. Look at this beautiful new binding. We're very proud of this because we, um, for a long time, held off on creating new resources that were actually uh, tangible and material. And so now we're getting some things um, in our hands. It feels great. So uh, Tana and Becca, obviously, you know, you guys wrote the content, you wrote yep. Cultivate Connection. And as you're writing it, um, things began to organize in a little, a slightly different way than they did for the last round of parenting classes we had. So why don't, Becca, do you mind just kind of introducing this to our audience? Um, if, if they haven't heard of it before, how do we frame it? And then why um, do we make the Connecting Practice Handbook? Absolutely. So you guys, if you've been into this connected parenting world for more than like five seconds, you know that everybody has a different way of thinking about it. Um, and so for us, we started our process with the curriculum rewrite a couple of years ago, just kind of like jotting out with giant sticky notes all over the wall, all the different incredible concepts, the great parenting tools, the great strategies. And one thing that we um, were kind of feeling for ourselves and then hearing from other people was when you're in the moment with a kid and you need to know what to do, it needs to be an action. It doesn't need to be a mindset. And so as we were going through this, we were like, man, a lot of people are saying that they're giving strategies, but the strategy is like, think about it differently. So we really wanted to try to separate those out. So we've got some like key frameworks because you do have to have a pretty different mindset in yeah. order to sure. parent or coach or teach or interact with kids in a different kind of way, in a connection-based way. Um, but at the same time, we wanted our connecting practices, which we didn't name it right away. First, we were just like, what are we going to tell people to do? And we had like 40 sticky notes of like all the tips that we've found helpful through our right. curriculum, through other partner resources, through the research that's out there. And as we started to go through them, it was like, wait a second, we can't give people 40 straight. Like that is way too overwhelming. What are you going to do in the moment whenever you need to know? Okay, no, I need you to tell me how to get my kid into the car and they're not right. coming. And they're throwing right. their shoes at me. Like I got to know what to do here. And so we put them all on this big Excel sheet and we just started to look for patterns. And so we didn't like set out to make these nine practices. There was never a number that we had in mind. It was just, we looked at all these things and we started to see some natural patterns. And as we kind of 
moved stuff around on the Excel sheet and started to see where things came together, we found our nine connecting practices and each of them were kind of focusing on three core components. Now we could have done an entire Cultivate Connection 18 module class for each connecting practice because there's so much to them. But we really wanted parents to walk away with some practical, in the moment, proactive and responsive strategies that they could use to support their kids. Um, And we wanted to bring the best of what our curriculum had always been, which was parenting tools, and just kind of separate that out from those mindsets, if that makes sense. And so the handbook is a really great, easy reference guide. It's beautiful. We worked with our amazing graphic designer, Rebecca Phillips, to design it. And so as you flip through the book and see the pages, you've got examples of what it's going to look like. Every single page has, where do I start? What do I do right now to start doing this? And so, I mean, I'll tell you, even on, I've got two sisters, they've got young kids. We'll be on the phone and I'll be like, wait a second. If I go to page 117 of this Connecting Practices Handbook, it has this list of questions. I'm going to just like read these to you and we're going to think about this out loud together. So it's really designed for that in the moment. What am I trying to do here? How am I trying to think about this? How do I apply this strategy um, in some practical ways? Tana, fill in the gaps. What am I missing? Well, I'm having, um, I, I don't know if I'm having like these feelings of like warm, sentimental memories or if I'm having some other feelings because, <laughs> um, I mean, I love how Becca was like, she so beautifully like summarized the process of like wow. coming to these things. But um, we were like holed up in a room for we weeks and weeks and oh, weeks, months. like talking in circles around how to sort of make sense of these things that are, um, I mean, you've said it beautifully, just like the foundational things of like being in relationship with somebody else and like a mind, like a mindful, thoughtful, considerate, connected, attachment, rich, trauma, informed way. Like that is a mouthful to say, Mm -hmm. and it is, um, incredibly complex to, to do and to be, to like embody that way of relating with kids Mm -hmm. is, is a little tricky sometimes. And we don't, we have like good ideas and best of intentions, but we don't always know our way forward. And so, I mean, we had fun. I'm not going to lie. We had fun, but I think we really thought it would happen fast. And it has been an, an ever evolving way of thinking about this material. And so in one hand, we did have, uh, Becca, you said it so well, like the Mm -hmm. mindset shifts and the way, like there are some fundamental changes that many of us have had to make along the way. We have to think about things differently. We have to view behavior differently. We have to think about development differently. We have to think about stress differently. We have to understand the impacts of adversity and trauma on the children and developing human beings. And when we think about those things differently, then we can ask like different questions and we can see things with a different perspective. And, and then we're often left with, okay, I've done the work of like reworking my mindset, but I literally have no idea now what to do. And even the knowing what to do is a discovery process. And ever, I think, you know, I'm not saying that we hit the nail on the head exactly, but some of our heartbeat was to think about things in a very nuanced way. Like we fundamentally like honor and believe that we're all wired really uniquely. And even as parents and caregivers, it's not about becoming um, the, the replica of someone else. You don't have to, this isn't robot situation. This isn't like trying to churn out one kind of adult. Yeah. These are like ideas for ways of like interacting that need to be able to be personalized. So right. sort of that was something that we had in our mind. What does it look like to set up some principles and some skills? See, principles and ideas are easy. But like telling somebody what to do and how to do it, knowing right. that like everybody's wired differently and there's something really beautiful about that. Yeah. That is a tricky situation. So oh, that is something we had in our mind as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I just think about when, um, Elizabeth and I first went through the the class eight, nine years ago, I mean, I had this vivid memory in our old house of, uh, getting, getting, we're heading toward a meltdown with one of our kids and 
I am I'm trying to remember with every fiber of my being, like some form of a short script that I can use to say, uh, you know, don't, don't do this and don't tear the room up. And like, let's just, let's just not do this right now. Let's just go to bed. You know, like I'm trying to figure out some way of, of calming down that engagement. And I remember yelling to Elizabeth, what am I supposed to do? What was the first thing? I don't know. We know what to say. I know. And it, I, I was compassionate. I was empathetic. I'm trying to like, you know, get, I'm trying to remember all the things going on in your brain. Uh, and at the same time, I, I had no idea how to do that practically. And so it did take uh, time and practice. And so I think the thing that um, I know that personally, I love about us having the connecting practice handbook. It is, I mean, it is small enough that if you wanted to clip it to your fridge with like a, just a heavy duty magnet clip or something like that, or you wanted to like, just keep it nearby, keep it in a giant pocket. If you want, we don't, we're not going to judge. Uh, having something that in the moment you can flip through and go, Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Look at it real quick and head back in. Um, it, it would have been very helpful for us in that time. And I know it, it'll be helpful for folks now. I mean, I love that JD, because sometimes what happens when we are even in the middle of class and you said it like the cultivate connection is truly transformative. Like that yeah. experience in the room, processing real stuff and figuring out like, literally a different way to be together as a family. I mean, there is like nothing as transformative in my opinion as like that space to inhabit with other parents and caregivers and people sure. taking care of kids, yeah. but we, we leave it. It's like when it's over, like usually the group that has gone through it together is bonded and mm -hmm. they have become like your, your safety net. And, and you are trying to hark back to the conversations or the examples or the families or the experiences that were shared in that class setting. And so our question was, well, what about people that don't have an opportunity to go through Cultivate Connection? What about them? What about people who have finished maybe a couple of years ago and are like, to your point, oh dear, I think I'm, you know, regressing, <laughs> quote unquote, or whatever. Right. And, and the reason we call them connecting practices is because they take so much stinking practice. Like yes, they yes, take practice yes. for us as adults and mm -hmm. they take practice for our kids. I remember early on when like the tide started to shift in the Ottinger house and there was like a way we managed behavior and we like had a significant awakening. I literally call it that. Like the Ottinger family great awakening. When Mo and I were like, oh my goodness, like we have not been seeing clearly at all what's going on at all. Like it was literally like the shackles fell off of our eyes and we saw our children and ourselves in like a whole new way. Right. And we started changing some of our interactions. And you know what, guys, it got harder. Yeah. Before it got better because we changed the script. I think right. the kids were like, oh, no, no, I'm so sorry. When we do this, mom and dad do this. Well, when mom and dad right. stop doing that, sweet children's nervous systems start having an internal panic attack. That's and right. so we're all like trying to revert back, even them. So shifting the tide takes so much practice yeah. and it, it should. There's nothing wrong with you. I, I remember one time there was a couple in the class and I could tell they came in and they just, they weren't sure if they were buying in. They just weren't so sure they were having it, you know, and you can see them coming. They're like, we're here. Or maybe it's one of, a, you know, a set of one of the partners in the, in the family or the relationship. Or like, rah, 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 rah. And they kind of raised their hand like, yeah, we tried that trust-based relational stuff and that trauma-informed parenting and it doesn't work. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, when did you try that? Oh, we learned about it three months ago at a conference. I was like, oh, you've been trying it for three months. I was like, oh, I'm so sorry, but this, you got to try it. it. Come back in like three years. Yeah. yeah. And let me know if it worked because it takes time to reset things. So our hope is that this connecting practice handbook can journey with you as you practice yeah. a different way of being with your family. And as you give your children time to practice. So it's, so I, I hope I'm a visual learner. So one of the things that Becca and I tried to do anytime we came to something complex, an idea or a concept, how can we express this visually so that it can stick in our brains so that in a moment of stress or whatever, JD, maybe, maybe you can't find a script, but maybe you can remember a picture 
yeah. of like, oh, that little way of being with the kid where I bend right. down and get on eye level you know, right. or whatever. Right. So uh, we hope it's accessible in the moment as you practice. Yeah. Becca, what's on your mind? I'm just thinking too, like so many people that try trust-based parenting, trust-based teaching, trust-based coaching, any of those things, they get tripped up at different ages and stages. And so what I love about the connecting practices too, is we were, uh, we had our, our cohort four of facilitators is in training this week. We started with them and we've got people parenting 19, 20 year olds, and we've got people parenting two and three year olds. And so, yes, the practices are going to look different at different ages, right? Like, Balancing nurture and structure looks one way with a two-year-old and it looks different with a 20-year-old. But what I love about these principles is that they really hold true for connected relationships. And so when you can get the mindset, when you can understand kind of like what the practice is and what the principle is, then you can apply it different ways with different kids. And like you said, Tana, we're wired so differently, even in your own, like if you're a teacher, you might have to slightly variate this 26 times for the 26 kids in your classroom. So it's not a formula. And um, that might be bad news for some people that are listening because people really, really, really want formulas. They really want you to say, every time there's a meltdown, do this. And the connecting practices aren't going to tell you that. They're going to say, every time there's a meltdown, Here's a lot of different things that you can try based on your relationship with that kid, based on that kid's needs in that moment. You could have a meltdown for 18 different reasons. So it's not a, when someone yells, do this. When someone throws something, do this. But it is a way of connecting, a way of correcting, a way of being. And um, so I just love kind of the universalness of it and how you're really able to think outside the box. You're able to still have your personality and like your family, like you're allowed to have your personality. You don't have to become Becca McKay to do this. And that's not going to work. You know what I mean? People try that and it doesn't work. And so, you know, if you're in a school, you don't have to become the principal. Like you are your own person with your own personality, but you can apply these principles. Well, and I think Beckett, you know, when we uh, obviously Empower to Connect started um, years and years ago, um, deeply connected to the work of Dr. Karen Purvis. And so one of the best things that you could do if you're trying to get into connected parenting is see her yeah, demonstrating it in the camp setting, in Absolutely. you know therapeutic settings that we've got on. A shout out to our YouTube channel. Go find it. You can watch all that stuff there. Uh, but when you watch Karen interact with kids, you're like, oh, I can do this. And you see, because you see how it fits in her personality. You cannot, unless you would like to get probably physically assaulted by a child, copy Karen's words yeah. <laughs> word for word and all of her, you know, cowboy and partner and all that, like all that, like, you know, sweet Texas language she's got, yeah. it's not going to always fly in every setting. Right. And right. unless you actually talk that way and you have that same demeanor, it doesn't work. And so what is helpful is to see how it flows in the way that Karen does it. And then that's why we, we did not say, When this happens or your first step is to say, whoa, back it up, cowboy. Like we do not say that because that does not work in every setting, right? What we can say is let's try some playful engagement as a first step to try and and deescalate or or neutralize any kind of like um, conflict that is coming up. And so, you know, those things are what ended up helping because it's, you know, to some extent you're learning a completely new language, right? And uh, you are going to take on some of the dialects and some of the practices initially of the person teaching you that language. But when you're immersed in it and you are constantly trying and trying and trying and you and the people around you are pulling the same rope in the same team, that language becomes easier and you find your way. You, you talked about not being able to uh, parent a 20 year old the same way as a three year old. Like, and I think innately we understand that in every other circumstance, right? Like you're not letting your, your, you know, 17 year old get out of the car, go into some kind of function and be like, okay, I love you, baby. Have a great day. Hey, come give mommy a kiss. Like it, maybe you do, but, but chances are you don't right? the same way that you would do as with your three-year-olds. And so yeah. understanding the framework of it, having a way for us to grow together. Um, and as you get older, what we're finding now with our kids too, is you get to kind of 
flip into education mode too. Like in those calmer moments, hey, listen, the reason we do this is that at your stage of brain development, like here's how this is happening. And so if when we're giving them that framework, it's now also equipping them to engage in connected relationships with their peers and with their folks. Our, our daughter is like dying to babysit. She is like, you know, like it, like itching at the gate for that gate to open for us to let her go babysit. And part of why is that she is watched with, with our youngest. She's watched herself learn now how to help deescalate, how to help calm down. And she'll say things like, oh, so-and-so babysitter, like she doesn't necessarily get it. Like she didn't understand how to work with Micah. So I just took her upstairs myself and got her ready for bed and took, you know, like, and so it's, it's a sweet thing to now watch her being able to, to have a framework for it, to understand it as well. And so, um, and I know obviously. Can I tell, can I tell, a, per, can I tell a little bit of a personal story? Oh, sure. please. I used to a lot. I used to a lot babysit for JD's kids because um, I lived in the same neighborhood and JD and I worked together at a school. Um, And so the three bigs, I babysat them when they were little and loved it, like had so much fun with them. I think I'm a pretty great babysitter. Recently, I had not because of the timing of COVID and all the things babysat their youngest. And so recently I was popping over for, I don't remember what the event was that, that JD and his wife were going to. So I walk in guys, I'm like a pretty rock star babysitter. Like people like me and they use and abuse my babysitting services. Pretty <laughs> often. I like it. I enjoy it. I walked in and JD's youngest doesn't know me. We don't have the same relationship. I haven't been around as she's been growing up. We've been isolated because of COVID life circumstances. I got married. There's lots of factors. But I walked in and JD, I'm going to tell you, your older daughter is definitely ready to babysit because she did even with me. So even with me, who knows all these strategies, who knows all these principles, I'm trying the tricks of my thing. And it is not, it is not going to happen. Yeah. And big sister is able to walk in and knows her little sister and she knows how to soothe her and how to work with her and how to walk with her. And so it's just a really beautiful picture of like, you can know all of these strategies. You can't walk into any room and feel confident or competent. And so I'll just say to those of you out there, Tana said it, but it takes time and it takes time with the specific kids. So I would say, even if you know all this stuff, even if you're amazing guys, I worked at a school and I was really good with those kids. Like I'm pretty good with kids and I could be pretty good with your youngest JD, but with the time investment, you know what I mean? Like it's going to take time for us to learn each other, for us to walk together, for her to trust me. Like it just takes time. And so it was a beautiful picture of how you've kind of taught this way of being to your older kids. It's really beautiful to see that happening in real time. And, and I, you didn't have relationship with her. I mean, you yeah, just hinted yeah. around it, but I'm just like going to put my finger on. You have no relationship with that sweet little baby girl. Right. Yeah. And who does? Her sister. Like, sister. And yeah, that's yeah, what I was going to say to bring it back full circle again, yeah. that yeah. there is this deep foundation of trust there. So, yeah. it, yep. you know, she didn't necessarily have to know all the right strategies right. And tools or like teach a trauma informed parenting class afterward herself. Right. right? Like, she has watched experientially like, oh no, I can see, hey, we better, we better catch it low because I see it coming now. Like, and hey, hey, do you want to come with me? Let's go upset, you know, like, so she's learned that from that relationship. But also some of that um, is not just the magic of her strategies. It is the the trust yeah. they have, right? They, they share a room. Like most nights, if, if, you know, little kiddo wakes up, thunderstorm, whatever, like she pops over into big sister's bed first before she comes down to see us now. And so, um, and so they built that trust there and that's, that's a a huge factor in it. So I think that's the other thing I would like to, for us to emphasize, like, as we go into this is that, um, as, as proud as we are of this, like as proud as we are of this resource and of, of cultivate connection, we have to remember that at the core of what we're talking about, it is about the relationships and about establishing a foundation of trust. And so that's undergirding everything. Like in those moments, you're, you're trying to mitigate meltdowns. You're trying to, to, to manage um, as you see, you know, dysregulation coming on. The core of that is what you're trying to do is just build repetition with that kid to say, Hey, I'm going to be here. When things are good, going to be here when things are bad, going to help you when things are good, going to help you when things are bad. Like when, when you're dysregulated, you don't have to do this alone. We're going to, we're going to learn how to regulate together. Right. Uh, And that's, that's the actual real magic sauce there. So, um, 
Yeah. Uh, why don't we kind of talk through what's going to be going on uh, on the podcast the rest of the summer? Uh, mm-hmm. And if you're listening to this, not in the summer, just know the sequence of episodes yep. after this one, yeah. we're walking through our connecting practices specifically. Well, last, I think it was last summer, we did a series where we sort of did a little bit of a dive into each connecting practice. So if you are wanting some more right now already, you can hop back to some episodes prior and start listening to those. But when we were thinking about heading into the summer, we thought, why don't we get some of our, um, you know, on the field, Cultivate Connection facilitators, some of our Empowered to Connect facilitator family, just some people, voices that we trust, that we know have been in the weeds, implementing and applying these strategies, you know, for a good long time. And they are vulnerable and honest and authentic and are ready to share some of their highs, lows, joys, some things that have stood out to them, some ways that they're using it in their own families, homes, and works. And so over the course of the next several episodes, you're going to just get to hear from some of the people that that we love, value, and trust, and hope that it would help, again, to our point of like, this is not a one-size-fits-all situation. Right. Um, we really love getting different, different voices and perspectives. So we want to introduce you to some of our favorite people. And um, I hope it'll be encouraging. So that's kind of where we're headed over the ne- the series of the next couple of episodes. And we kind of have have thought we like taking the summer to do this. So it's becoming a little bit of a rhythm where we have all sorts of things that we get to talk about throughout the rest of the school year, but kind of taking a little bit of a different shift over the summer and focusing on the connecting practices. I just know that I'm in a little bit of a different mindset over the summer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for better or worse. Like I was like, y'all counting down the days, literally counting down the days till the summer. And then it hit. And I was like, Oh my goodness gracious. Counting we down the days till school starts again. Yeah. It's like, Oh dear. I thought I was ready. You know? So it just, whatever. It's just always about transition. Yeah, for sure. Well, and I think, you know, selfishly when we decided this was going to be our summer path, I was like, Oh, thank God. Because I knew I needed to be in the recording yeah. each, each yeah. week. Yeah. You know? We are, we're going to be at home and it's, it's, there's, there's a beautiful chaos. Um, and yeah. some of that chaos is a lack of structure that, that normally yeah. keeps us at, at kind of warp speed. Um, and so there's, we know there's going to be a, an adjustment for a week or two where we're learning how to have a little bit more freedom again, and it's going to then have to snap back into some structure. Yeah. And, um, and so I'm excited for us to be going through as well. And I think the thing that um, all of us would say, and I, I, we, my wife and I took the the parenting class, the ETC parent trainer class three times before going through to become facilitators. And so, uh, you know, at different stages, we need it. So if you yeah. listen to them last summer, that's great. You can go back and listen again, or you can listen to these this summer and you'll probably get a completely different set of, um, you will the takeaways yeah. from it and you're getting to hear from uh different people in different contexts and different places around the world and different stages of their parenting and so uh, i'm i'm really excited and obviously i i know you listening yeah. know who's coming we know so that's why we're you know really yeah. excited because we got some great uh folks to introduce you to and so um, well, one thing and- i'll say real quick jd but to the like listen to both every connecting practice there's nine but every connecting practice has three core components yeah. so that is how becca and i went from 40 sticky notes to nine things is that we snuck three things under every <laughs> nine you know every, <laughs> every, so there is a lot of goodness there So truly we can have three separate conversations about one connecting practice with three different educators, parents, professionals, child welfare workers. Right. And it would be a totally different episode because they're going to talk about the part of it that is important to them Mm -hmm. or the thing that they're having to work the hardest on or the thing that they're needing to implement or the thing that their child specifically needs. So Literally, I would be happy to talk about them over and over and over and over and over again, because I think there's just so much Mm. goodness there. Yeah. So what you'll get this summer is nine unique perspectives, different than the ones that we did last summer. Yeah. Becca, any more thoughts before we close out today? No, if you're looking for those episodes, it's uh, episode 86 last summer is when we kicked off our connecting practices. And so scroll back through your podcasts and you can listen to them kind of alongside. I'll say in that we were doing a little bit more of like teaching what the practice is 
And this summer with our facilitators, we're going to really focus on, okay, guys, but what does this look like for you personally? And we've got facilitators with adult kids. We've got facilitators with littles. um, We've got facilitators all across the states and a few international that are going to share with us their perspectives. And so we really believe that these practices are universal, but the way that they're applied is going to look pretty different. And so we're ex- just yeah. like everybody said, so excited to have you guys hear some of our facilitators. You'll see some familiar faces and some new ones over the summer as you follow along with us. Yeah. So the Connecting Practice Handbook is available on it our is. Um, ETC website, you just go to empoweredtoconnect.org, go up to the top little menu, hit the word shop, and you'll go to our shop and it's there ready to to be downloaded as an ebook or shipped as a hard copy, as JD said. Um, Like we do have little dreams of having a nice, strong magnet. You can pop it on your refrigerator if your refrigerator has magnets. The stainless steel one says don't, but you got sides of refrigerators. Um, and at some point, a fun re- a f- fun magnet might just be showing up on our shop. But yes. I, you know, th- it might be. Yes. There might be one coming in the next couple of weeks there to add to your basket. Um, there's also some magnets and stickers, just some fun stuff that we have. Yeah. And um, we are excited about this season as an organization. Like we've been building to this moment to yeah. kind of hark back to like what we had some foundational work to do in this massive rewrite. But we are excited to be able to put resources out that we feel like are to what we want, what we have wanted, what we needed, and what we still want and need yeah. is kind of, those are our um, our guardrails when it comes to like, is this something we need to put our hand to? Is it something we would want and use? Yes, it is. Right. So right. we have free downloadable resources right now on the website. Please go find those. You literally go under resources, go down to digital downloads. There's already some good stuff you can hit for free. You can buy the Connecting Practice Handbook. There will be a magnet coming soon. A clip. There's, there is magnets and stickers. Go shop, shop, shop. And there'll be more coming as we keep building out our shops. We're excited. Definitely. Yeah. Well, guys, thank y'all. And uh, you can check if you're wanting to buy the Connecting Practice Handbook, go look at stickers, magnets, all that. Um, you can head to the link that is in the show notes right now, um, or you can always navigate there from going to empowertoconnect.org just straight up. So uh, thank y'all. All right. Well, a huge thank you to Becca and Tana for joining us and uh, talking through the Connecting Practices Handbook today. And um, as we said, the next several weeks are going to be us walking through um, each of those connecting practices with folks who are doing this kind of in the field, so to speak. They're facilitators of ours, those who are uh, teaching the courses and also trying to parent in the same way that we are through a trust-based, attachment-based, connection-based lens. And so um, one of the things that we'll do uh, intentionally throughout the course of the summer is talk to folks who are parenting in different seasons, in different geographical locations and contexts, um, in the context of foster care, adoption, biological parenting, caregiving, um, all those things, because we want to make sure that um, you're seeing that we're talking through um context and frameworks that are that are different so that we're not pinning ourselves into this is the way that we parent kids through adoption this is the way we like we want to make sure that that we are showing and displaying that um we believe it's our assertion that this is the best way to parent humans <laughs> and to go through relationships in life and so we'll we'll talk through um all of that this summer we're super excited to go through it got some great great guests lined up and so uh stay tuned if, as Becca said, you want to go through the old Connecting Practices episodes, you just can't wait and you've got to dig into them now, you can start back at episode 86 and roll through that way. Um, and if not, then stick with us because next week we have um, one of our staff people and um, one of our uh, Cultivate Connection facilitators, Matt Smith and his wife, Laurel, who are going to join us to talk through um, one of our first Connecting Practices. And so uh, with all that said, for Kyle Wright, who edits and engineers all of our audio, for Tad Jewett, who created the music behind the Empowered to Connect podcast, I'm J.D. Wilson, and we will see you next week on the Empowered to Connect podcast. <laughs>